About seven years ago, I was in a really dark place in my life. My career suddenly crashed, I broke up with my partner of ten years, and my landlord decided that he wanted the house back so that he could sell it. Turned out the bastard just wanted new tenants and to double the rent, but anyway. I was able to fall back on my parents for a bit, but I'm not going to lie, it felt like I had failed. I moved into my parents' home and I got my old room back, even though it was now the guest bedroom. All my own stuff was kept in the garage. Much as I do like my parents, I remembered quickly why I was so keen to leave home at 17. We got on better when there was distance between us, and now I was back under their roof. Things got quite tense really quickly. I was processing everything that had happened to me, and I just didn't need my mother's bullshit. I looked at my savings and decided that I needed a break, just a week or so away with no distractions and a chance to look for a new job. I wasn't fussy where it was in the country now. I had no ties and the more I looked at it like that, the better I started to feel. It was early October and I found a nice reasonably priced cottage in Connemara. I went ahead and booked it for five days. I travelled across from Wicklow and must have taken every wrong turn possible. I also ventured down a road that had sheep lying on it. As the saying goes, we're not in Kansas anymore. My host said that he would leave the keys in a local pub. I know it sounds bad, but I was expecting a back of the beyonds pub with some creepy old men propping up the bar, but it was actually really nice and had a decent turf fire going. There was a slightly creepy man though. Every true country pub must have one at least, I guess. I collected the keys and carried on my way. It was starting to get dark, so I wasn't hanging around, even though I was starving. I eventually found the place, and it was as I expected. It was a typical old-style cottage with an open kitchen and dining room, a small bathroom to the back, and two tiny bedrooms, one on either side. I chose the bedroom on the right. It had an old-style iron bed, a heavy wardrobe, and then a modern-style dresser which looked completely out of place. Don't get me wrong, the place was nicely done out. It was clean and welcoming. Some basic supplies were left in for me, and there was a fire log and some peat brickets to get the stove going. I lit a nice fire in the stove and made myself some tea. I also tucked into the sandwich I picked up at a garage several hours ago. It was rotten. Thankfully there was a fresh loaf and some butter in my welcome pack, so I just made toast. I settled down on the little couch and took out my book. I wish I had picked up some wine on my way through, but I figured there'd be a shop nearby and I'd sort that tomorrow. It had been a long drive and I was exhausted, so after a while I drifted off to sleep. I remember having a really vivid dream that there were three people standing over me and that they were on fire. I could feel the heat of the flames and I could see their skin bubbling and melting, but their faces were emotionless. I sensed there were two women and a man. A loud thumping sound woke me up. I was still on the couch and completely alone. There was another thump and I realised it was coming from the second bedroom. I don't know where the courage came from, but I got up and I checked the room. In my logic, I knew the house was secure, there couldn't be anyone there. But what was it? I opened the door and flicked on the light. There was nothing. I took a breath of relief and went to leave, but as I did so, I was frozen to the spot. I could feel a chill working its way up my spine, and I was petrified. I didn't see or hear anything, but I knew there was something there and that it felt dark. I began to think of the Lord's Prayer, and after a moment the feeling began to subside, but it was a good twenty minutes or so before I felt normal again. I went to the other bedroom and I locked the door behind me. I checked the time and it was 4.33am. I kept the light on and the next two hours seemed to pass really, really slowly. It was a dark morning anyhow, wet and miserable. The kind of day you would need to keep the lights on. I knew that I needed to go out and get some shopping, but I was thinking at that point, what the hell was that? 
Was I imagining it? Am I safe here? I know I wanted to get away from people, but what if I needed help? I went to the nearest village and called in to a local shop. It was the kind of place where they'd only have one brand of anything, and if you wanted anything special, you'd be out of luck. But the lady was really nice and I got talking to her. She asked me where I was staying and I told her about the cottage. She asked me whether I was okay there and I found that odd. She said she knew the owners and that they were lovely people, but that they had made a mistake buying that place. She said that the land was unlucky but wouldn't be drawn on the details. She did say that nobody ever really stayed there more than a night or two even though renters would always be asked for the money up front, just like I was. The owners were quite strict about refunds too. I made the decision that I would stay. I couldn't afford to write off the money that I had paid out. I guess the experience with my former landlord was enough for me. I returned to the cottage and I lit a candle. I said aloud that whoever was there should know that I meant them no harm and that I would only be there for a short while and basically to please leave me the f alone. The following night I made sure I was in my room before I fell asleep. I kept the door locked and the bedside lamp on. Sure enough, I did hear the sounds again that night, but this time I gently whispered, stay away from me. The noises stopped and then there was nothing. Again I did not sleep, but I didn't encounter anything for the rest of my stay. I figured that if I could handle a few nights alone in a spooky cottage, I was ready for the next chapter in my life. When I got back to my parents, I set a few boundaries of my own, and they seemed to respect that. I also managed to find a job soon after, and although it wasn't what I really wanted, it was a stepping stone, and I moved into my own apartment a couple of months later. I still think about my experience in the cottage, but although it was terrifying at the time, I think I did learn something from it and I'm not afraid to stand up for myself now.